Chapter 31. The Vampire. It was nine o'clock at night. We still hadn't rested, except for brief moments during which we discussed various ways to solve spirit-related problems. Here, a patient begging for help. There, another in need of comforting magnetic passes. When we went to assist two patients in Ward 11, I heard screams in a nearby ward. I instinctively moved towards the noise, but Narcissa quickly stopped me. No, don't. That is where the sexually unbalanced patients are. The scene would be too painful to look at. Save your emotions for later. I didn't insist, but thousands of questions rushed to my mind. A whole new world was unfolding for my intellectual examination. I absolutely had to remember Laura's advice at every moment so as not to become distracted from my duty. Soon after nine, someone arrived from the back area of the enormous complex. It was a strange-looking little man who seemed to be a humble worker. Narcissa welcomed him kindly. What is the matter, Justino? What is it? The worker was a member of the Sentinel Corps of the Chambers of Rectification. He was distressed and answered, I've come to inform you that a poor woman is begging for help at the large gate that leads to the agricultural fields. I think she must have escaped the attention of the front-line sentinels. Why didn't you yourself see what she wanted, inquired the nurse. The worker made a scrupulous gesture and explained, According to our regulations, I couldn't, because the poor woman is covered with black spots. What? replied Narcissa, alarmed. Yes, ma'am. Then the case is very serious. I was curious and followed the nurse across the moonlit field. It was no short distance. We saw the silent trees of the vast complex side by side as they rustled gently in the soft breeze. After walking for more than a mile, we came to the large gate mentioned by the worker. There before us, on the other side, stood the miserable figure of a woman begging for mercy. I saw nothing but the shadow of the unhappy creature, who was dressed in rags, and had a grotesque face and legs covered with open sores. But judging from the alarmed look stamped on her ordinarily calm face, Narcissa seemed to see many more details that I could not perceive. "'Children of God!' cried the beggar on seeing us. "'Give shelter to a weary soul. "'Where is the heaven of the elect, "'so that I may enjoy the peace I have longed for?' "'That mournful voice moved my heart. "'Narcissa, in turn, also seemed to be moved, "'but spoke confidently. "'Can't you see the black spots?' "'No,' I answered. "'Your spirit sight still isn't sufficiently trained.' "'After a short pause, she continued.' If it were in my hands, I would open the door right now. But on dealing with creatures in this condition, I can't make that decision on my own. I have to talk to the chief warden on duty. She approached the unfortunate woman and spoke to her in a caring voice. Please, just wait a few minutes. We hurried back. For the first time, I met the director of Sentinels of the Chambers of Rectification. Narcissa introduced me and then reported what had happened. He mouthed a meaningful gesture and remarked, You did right in telling me about this. Let's go. We went to the gate. When we arrived, the chief warden, Brother Paulo, carefully examined the newcomer from the umbral and stated, For the time being, this woman can't receive our help. She is one of the strongest vampires I have ever seen. She must be left to herself. I felt scandalized. Wouldn't we be neglecting our Christian duties if we abandoned the suffering creature to her fate? Narcissa seemed to share my view and was quick to plead. But, Brother Paulo, is there no way that we can shelter this miserable creature in the chambers? If I allowed that, he explained, I would be betraying my responsibility as a warden. And pointing to the beggar, who was waiting for a decision and shouting impatiently, he exclaimed to the nurse, Narcissa, have you noticed anything else beside the black spots? Now it was my instructor who said no. Well, I can see something else, answered the chief warden. In a low voice, he suggested, count the spots. Narcissa looked at the unhappy creature and replied after a few moments, 58. With the patience of those who know how to explain things lovingly, Brother Paulo continued, those dark spots represent 58 children murdered at birth. On each of the spots, I see the mental image of one of those destroyed little ones. 
Some were clubbed to death. Others were suffocated. This unfortunate creature was a professional abortionist. She used to exploit the affliction of inexperienced young women and committed these terrible crimes under the pretext of easing their consciences. Suicides and murders may sometimes present mitigating circumstances, but her case is worse by far. I was astonished as I recalled the medical procedures that I often witnessed up close during my earthly days when, in order to save the mother's life, it was necessary to sacrifice the unborn child because of the danger. However, Brother Paulo was reading my mind and added, I'm not referring to legitimate measures that make up part of a trial of expiation, but to the crime of murdering those who are just beginning the journey of their earthly experience, endowed with the sublime right to life. Displaying the sensitivity of a noble soul, Narcissa pleaded, Brother Paulo, I also made many mistakes in the past. Let's help this unfortunate creature. If you would allow it, I will treat her with special care. The chief warden was impressed by her sincerity, but answered, My friend, I realize that all of us are indebted spirits. However, we have in our favor the acknowledgement of our weaknesses and the willingness to expiate our debts. But for now, this creature wants only to disturb those who are trying to work. Spirits who bring sentiments hardened by hypocrisy emit destructive energies, which is why we have a guard service in our colony. And, smiling expressively, he continued, I'll prove it to you. The chief warden approached the beggar and asked her, Sister, what do you wish of our fraternal cooperation? Help! 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 she replied tearfully. But my friend said assertively, We must learn to accept expiatory suffering. Why did you so often cut short the lives of fragile little infants who, with God's permission, were about to begin their earthly struggles? Upon hearing this, she threw a terrible fit of hatred and shouted, Who's accusing me of such infamy? I have a clear conscience, you wretch. I spent my existence on earth helping motherhood. I was charitable and pious, good and pure. According to the living picture of your thoughts and actions, that isn't so. I believe, sister, that you haven't yet experienced the benefit of remorse. When you open your soul to the blessings of God and acknowledge your need, then you may come back here. Angrily, the woman answered, Devil, sorcerer, servant of Satan, I shall never come back. I'm looking for the heaven they promised me, and I plan on finding it. Assuming a firmer attitude, the chief warden spoke with authority. Please go your own way. The heaven you are longing for isn't to be found here. We live in a house of work where patients are aware of their evil and want to be healed with the help of workers of goodwill. The beggar objected insolently. I haven't asked for any remedy or assistance. I'm seeking the heaven I deserve after having done so many good deeds. And, shooting us a dreadful look of extreme wrath, she discarded the appearance of a wandering, infirm person and walked firmly away as though completely in charge of herself. Brother Paulo gazed after her for several moments, then turned to us and added, Did you see what the vampire was doing? Her criminal condition was obvious, and yet she was pleading innocence. She is profoundly wicked, and yet declares herself good and pure. She suffers desperately and feigns tranquility. She has created a hell for herself, yet pretends to be looking for heaven. As we continued to listen to his lesson in silence, the chief warden concluded, It is fundamental to be cautious with either good or evil appearances. Of course, that poor creature will be aided elsewhere by divine providence. However, for the sake of true charity and the position I hold here, I couldn't open our doors to her.